You guys know the right stuff here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the first part of how to make a slap battle game. So you can see we have our slaps up here, and we have a hand in our inventory. And for some reason, this I don't know why it's acting like that. But you can see we're in a test server, so we have our second player here. And if we were to click, and we'll slap him, and he goes flying. Now, in the next tutorials, we're going to be adding more hands in the main lobby and more functionality like that. Um, but this tutorial is just part one. And you can see every time you slap him, he gives you a slap. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the video. Congratulations to Microsoft Troubles1995 for winning the daily giveaway. I hope you enjoy your 15 Robux. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, so I'm in my base play here, and there are two things we're going to do for part one. One is script our first hand, and two is script the leader stats. I actually said that backwards because we're going to start by scripting the leader stats. So in service, script service, we can go ahead and add in a script. And we can go ahead and rename the script to leader stats. So you're going to create a function for when the player joins the game. So you can do game dot players dot player added colon connect function and we can name it to player. Now I'm going to create a variable for the leader stats and we can do local leader stats equals instance dot new and then we're going to get a folder. And we can set the parent of the folder to the player. Then can we do we can do leader stats dot name, and we're gonna name it to leader stats of course. So now we're gonna create a variable for our slaps. So local slaps is going to be equal to instance dot new, and we're gonna add in an int value and set the parent of the int value to be leader stats. We can do slaps dot name is going to be equal to slaps and slaps dot value equals to zero now there is more to this script that we're going to add in a later tutorial um but not this tutorial um because we are not at the point yet so now that we have our leader stats done for now you can see if we play it we have a slaps tab in our uh, leaderboard thingy. All right, so now that we have our leader stats done, what we're going to do is we're going to create our first hand. So as you can see in the toolbox here, I have made this hand on Blender and I have added in everything that needs to be added in. Now it is a bit funky when you like move it and rotate it and stuff, but that's fine. So I made this hand in like 30 minutes on Blender with the YouTube tutorial. Um, and as you can see, I have not textured it. So what you can do, if you want to, um, you can change the color of it or the texture of it um, to whatever you want it to be since it is not textured. But since it's the default hand, I'm gonna keep it the default color. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move the hand out of the uh, model and into the workspace then you can delete the hand and it already has everything it needs inside of it it has a mesh part a handle and a hitbox mesh part is the hand itself the handle is how you hold it and the hitbox is just a hitbox so we know how it gets hit so if you're gonna make your own hand there are three requirements one it must have a part named handle and spelled exactly like this that acts as um, the place for you to hold the tool. And as you can see, I already edited it in the tool grip editor right here. So you don't have to worry about how the player is going to hold it. And it must have a hitbox covering the handle and the hand itself. And this hitbox is so that way we can detect if a player gets slapped. But there's one last thing we need, and that is an animation. So in the plugins tab here, we can do the rig builder plugin and click on a block rig. You can see it spawns in a dummy here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create an animation uh, for when the for the glove to whack. So what we can do is on the plugins tab, we can open up the animation editor. And I'm just going to create an animation real quick. We're going to select a dummy. We can name it Whack Anim. All right. We're going to create. Now I'm just going to speed this up, and I'm going to leave a model with the animation in the description. But um, make sure that you click on these three dots if you're creating your own, and set animation priority to action. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and speed up the whack again. A model will be in the description. So as you can see, I have created this animation. You can see it is wax. So once you have your animation, you're going to click the three dots and you can click publish to Roblox. So you're just going to title it, whatever you want to and click submit. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the link that pops up and it should bring up a website on the link here you're going to see this random batch of numbers which you are just going to go ahead and copy you can go ahead and close this so we're going to close the animation editor and close the dummy so now back to the hand and the handle you can go ahead and add in a script and we're going to go ahead and Oops, we're going to go ahead and rename this to hit handler, all right? But before we go to scripting this, in the hit handler script, we can add in an animation. And in the animation, we can set the animation ID to our whack animation ID that we just copied and click enter. So now we have an animation for it, which is going to be important for the script. So in the script, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable for the tool. So local tool is going to be equal to script.parent.parent. .parent. Then we're going to create a variable for the animation. So local anim is going to be equal to script colon wait for child. We're going to get the animation. And we can just set variable for anim track, which we will set later. So then we can create a variable for hit chars. So local hit chars is going to be equal to, and then we're going to create like a folder type thing or a list with nothing in it. And local debounce is going to be equal to false. So the debounce is the cooldown between hits. So whenever the tool is active or activated, we're going to create a function. So you can do tool dot activated colon connect function. And we're not going to set anything for these right here. So we're going to do if debounce, then. So if debounce equals true, then we're just going to return. So we're just going to leave because we only want this to run if we don't have a debounce. So we're just going to bring this end down and down here. You can set debounce to true. All right. So now we're going to create a variable for the humanoid so local humanoid is going to be equal to tool dot parent dot humanoid just like that all right so now we're going to check if we have an animation track so if not anim track then we're going to set the anim track to anim track equals humanoid colon load animation animation like that in parentheses and we can set it to anim right so again we're gonna bring this end down so we can script more now we're gonna make the animation play so you can do anim track colon play all right and we can wait and then this is where you're gonna set a cooldown so however long you want it to be for the player to hit so for me, since it's a default glove, I'm going to wait 2.5 seconds before the player can hit again. So the player can only hit every 2.5 seconds <coughs> for the default glove. And then we're going to do debounce equals to false. So now we're going to script the part that actually sends the player flying. So we're going to go down to lines and we're going to do tool dot hitbox 
that touched colon connect function hit so now we're gonna make sure that it's not the player that it's hitting because we don't want to slap ourselves so if um hit chars um and we're gonna do hit dot parent or not debounce then so if the debounce is off then we're going to just go ahead and return so i'm going to bring this line down here so we can again script some more so now we're going to check if um the glove hit a person so if hit dot parent colon find for oops nope colon find first child humanoid then we're gonna create a variable for the enemy player so we can do local e char it's going to be equal to hit dot parent and now we're gonna set a variable for the player char so local player char is going to be equal to tool dot parent so now i'm going to create a variable for the enemy humanoid root part and the player humanoid root part so local local e hum oops, human root part is going to be equal to hr colon find first child humanoid root part and local player human root part is going to be equal to player char colon find first child player it's not player humanoid root part just like that so now we're gonna check if the root parts exist so if player humanoid or player humanoid root part and e humanoid root part then First of all, we're going to disable the script so it doesn't run more than once. So script dot disabled equals to true. And we're going to make the enemy player um, sit. So we can do echar dot humanoid dot sit is going to be equal to true. So basically all this does is it makes the player sit so they can't move while they're being flown around. So now we're going to create a force so we can do local force. It's going to be equal to instance dot new. I'm going to create body velocity right here. And we're going to set the parent of it to the enemy humanoid root part. And we're going to do force dot max force um, is going to be equal to vector three dot new. It's going to do two comma two comma two. Alright, because we're going to send them flying a little bit. And we're going to do times math dot huge. So we're going to send them flying. Alright, we're going to do local direction. This is going to be equal to, and then parentheses, e humanoid root part um, dot c frame dot position minus player humanoid root part um that c frame dot oops dot position and then outside the parentheses you can do dot unit we can do force dot velocity um it's going to be equal to and in parentheses direction plus vector three dot new and we're gonna do zero comma one comma zero all right and then outside the parentheses here, we're going to do dot unit times 25. So this is basically setting um, how much you want them to be flying. So if you want to fly a little bit further, you can do um, times 50. If you want them to twi fly twice as far, if you want them to fly farther than that, you can do times 100. If you want to fly even farther, you can do times 500. Just play around for this for a while to see how much you want your default gloves to send them flying. Alright, so now we're going to make them spin around. So we can do local rotation. It's going to be equal to instance.new. I'm going to create a body, oops, body angular velocity. I'm going to set the parent to enemy humanoid root part. 
you can do a rotation dot angular velocity it's going to be equal to new vector 3 dot new 1 comma 1 comma 1 and this is how much you're going to decide to spin around so you're going to do times math time, uh, dot pi so pi is one rotation it's the, like rotation it's the ratio to circumference and area or something i don't i don't know uh, and we're going to do times and this is how much you're going to decide if you want to spin around if you do one you're going to spin around one time two two times three three times four 5.6 is 5.6 times but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do math dot random one comma five so what this does it's going to make them spin around a random time a random number between one and five that's how much they're going to spin around we can do rotation dot max torque it's going to be equal to and then we can actually go ahead and just copy this line from line 42 right here we're just going to copy this part no nope. so we're just going to paste it right here and we can do rotation dot p is going to be equal to 5000 and after uh, 0.35 seconds we're going to destroy the force or else they'll be flying forever so we can do force uh colon destroy or else they'll fly forever and rotation colon destroy or else they'll rotate forever and then lastly we can finally let the player uh stand up so we can do uh echar dot humanoid dot sit is going to be equal to false all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reward the player um with the slap so we can do local player is going to be equal to game dot players colon get player from character and we're going to get tool dot parent so we can do player dot leader stats leader stats dot slaps the value is going to be equal to we can just copy this right here Here the leader stats that slaps that value plus and we're going to give them one slap so below this end here we're going to do hit chars and we're going to do uh, brackets hit dot parent and we're going to set it to true so equal to true we're going to wait 2.5 seconds and we're going to do script dot disabled equals false and then we can do hit chars um hit dot parent is going to be equal to nil and if we did everything right that should be the end of our script so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the hand into the backpack uh where is the backpack or starter pack right here so that way the player starts with it for this tutorial and then i'm going to go to the test tab and i'm going to start a test with two players so once it loads in you can see that both of us are here and i have my hand here now if i just walk into him nothing happens and if you can see if i click it plays the animation what in the world is going on all right so you can see if i click it will play the animation um there's something weird going on i don't know why that's happening um but if i were to go ahead and slap the player here you can see he goes flying and if you look closely you can see he's sitting down for a split second but you can only set you can only slap him once every zero or 2.5 seconds as you can see and every time you slap him it gives you a slap him it gives you a slap now if i became the other player and i slap him back you can see that now i have a slap too and he also goes flying Anyways guys, that's it for this uh, part 1. If you enjoyed, you should leave a like and subscribe. Next tutorial, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the main lobby. And I might add more hands. And then after that, some, at some point, we're going to add special abilities. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!